Hey, good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us on this week's edition of Behind the Lava Lover. I'm your host for tonight, T, and I am joined by... Michael Tan. Me, Johnny. And me, Fatu. Thank you for joining us. Now, tonight, we're going to get into a topic that's very close for someone like me, raised here in the United States, and someone who's not familiar with the Samoan language. So the question I want to pose to you three is, are you a real Samoan if you don't speak the Samoan language? Or like us Americanized Samoans like to say, Samoan. Are you a real Samoan? Uh, I'd like to start off with Tan. Culture identity is a very important to basically everyone in the world, right? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, people have a sense of self and how they can relate to others. And through this identity, we're able to uh, find a place to belong in a particular social or ethnic group. So it's, it's important that uh, for us to, uh, to try to find happiness. And for me, am, am I Samoan if I don't speak the language? Yes. My answer is yes, because um, we're all in this world on our quest for happiness and we try to discover our true identity so that we can find our authentic self, right? And this way we can be happy and feel good about ourselves. And um, what I'm trying to say is, it doesn't matter um, whether you can't speak the language or you are a mix of something else or whatever the circumstances is, uh, what matters is what the, that individual feels, what his happiness is when he discovers his um, identity, right? Because identity shapes us as the person that you are now. And it's important to realize that um, we should be respectful of um, everyone. And no matter what their race or ethnicity is, uh, people shouldn't be, they shouldn't be judged on whether they speak a language or not um they should be judged on their deeds um and not their color of their skin or what country they live in so um i can relate to this question because i am a fakasi i'm mixed uh for years go growing up it took me a long time to discover what my identity was because i was half chinese half Samoan but I was raised in American Samoa where general population was Samoan and only like 1% was Chinese, right? So it was difficult for me growing up um, having to learn one culture and completely shut off the other culture because um, I was around mostly Samoans, so I couldn't learn Chinese because the only Chinese people I was around was the people my dad took me uh, to when he was like working in restaurants and stuff. <clears throat> so that is my brief ex uh, my brief answer for now. All right, thank you for that. Yeah, gender uh, <laughs> uh, culture identity is definitely huge, uh, especially now with the accessibility and technology and, and being able to, you know, research your own people if you're, you know, geographically located close by or far away, you know, there's always going to be questions about uh, where, where your roots come from culturally. Uh, Fatu, what are your thoughts on, you know, meeting another Samoan, but he doesn't speak the language at all? Do you have any thoughts about their authenticity as a Samoan? Or? Or how do you how do you view it? What's called it? Um, your question was like, are you like someone if you don't know how to speak someone or if you do? Like, uh, what's all it? Being in the military, meeting a lot of Samoans. What's all living in Hawaii and then going back to uh, American Samoan? Like, I've met a lot of Samoans that don't speak Samoan. So, like, 
my answer is no. Them not being able to speak Samoan doesn't like doesn't define them as Samoan because what's called it? it's not their fault that they don't know the language. Maybe their parents didn't teach them or they weren't just around like enough Samoans to speak Samoan. So like so my answer is no. And uh, what's all it? And to top it off, uh, what you call it? Like I feel like what's you call it? Because I also have family who are Afrikaans, so I feel like as long as you like get an idea of the culture, which is basically like our culture is built on respect and and what you call it and uh, religion, then you're someone enough to hang out with me and drink a few. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sure. Thank you for that. Um, last but not least, Johnny, you know, you are married to someone who's grown up under the same circumstances as myself. What, how do you view it? You know, of course, we know you, you married one, so of course you're not looking down. <laughs> so what are your thoughts upon, you know, meeting your, your fellow Samoans out there that don't speak the language? Um. Well, thanks for the opportunity. Um, I, I find it funny. Uh, so I'm part Tongan. Um, I'm not even full Samoan, but I was born and raised in Samoa. I left Samoa when I was uh, in my teen years. We came to move to Utah was back in the early 2000s. When I got here, the dichotomy was completely different. I was this new, I was, I was basically fresh out the boat. I was the fob um, and didn't know what the trends were in the States because at that time, you know, we, we, we still only had three channels. And so we had KBCK, uh, NBC and PBS. So I wasn't fluent with, uh, what was cool at the time for a teenager. And so I, you know, I got thrown into this mix and then I, I fell in with the polys really quickly. Mostly the Tongans, a lot of my Tongan family was up here. And so I, I fell in with them and, you know, picked up their way of speaking, the way their slangs and stuff like that. And the Tongans all, uh, the a lot of majority of the Tongans here in Utah all spoke Tongan. But every Samoan that I ran into didn't speak Samoan. They were born and raised in Utah. The parents raised in Utah. They, they know the main word. They know all the cuss words. You know, that's uh, when everybody <laughs> starts off every language. You know all the cuss words and then high and by, maybe shower, you know. The, the keywords and so it was like it wasn't I didn't think of it that way and my, my mentality was you know I was trying to fit in and then as I became an adult that's when I started noticing the clicks with the within the adults it was uh those that came from Samoa would come up and they would you know segregate themselves with their own group someone with their with the same um, similarities or same uh, experiences as them. And we, I think we as humans, we do that um, without thinking. We gravitate to those that we find familiar. So it keeps us, you know, so we're comfortable with stuff that we recognize. Change can sometimes be hard for most people. So it was like, never, I never looked at it as, um, am, am I this, am I that, am I this, am I that? But then... I started noticing in the groups, in the pockets of, of, of people born in Samoa, from Samoa, uh, whether it was Western or American, um, that spoke the language. They started, while they were within their groups, it was, you know, oh, this, oh, you don't understand that? Oh, that's because, you know, back in the islands, we do that. And it, it became this, and it, it started off as friendly, but it soon turned into condescending, where it was like, Oh, you don't know. Well, you know, for us, you know, because we and we and this and that, and, and it, it, it it became it was shameful at, at, to to an extent. Um, and so I started laughing because my wife is uh, was is full Samoan. Her mom and dad both Samoan, um, but she was born and raised here, California. She was born and raised California, moved to Utah. I dragged her here, um, but. She doesn't, she understands someone but doesn't speak someone. And she always felt like every time we go to the someone gatherings and I'll fit in, I'll fall in with my group of people and we'll start talking in someone. And she just kind of sits in the back. She understands what, what's being said. She just has, uh, she's self-conscious with speaking language herself because she thinks she sounds dumb. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with just positive reinforcement and stuff like that. But 
she always felt like she was being judged by the other um, ladies at church or at, at the, the flag days or at the, the, the Samoan parks or celebrations or anything like that. So it felt like, oh, you know, oh, why is she speaking English to me? I'm speaking Samoan. She understands what I'm saying, what's going on. And it was like that little piece of self-consciousness that just stuck with her for a long time. And I know there were quite a few people that were the same way, like, um, they felt like they didn't fit in with the Saab ones from the islands. They fit, fit in more with the people that were from the state side that, you know, the, the, maybe the enunciation of the English language was a little bit better than most, um, as opposed to everybody that speaks the language has that lingering, um, accent in the back that, you know, you try to hide it, but every now and then it pokes his head out. Um, but I think, as far as being Saab one, as long as you know what you are, where you come from, whether you were been there or not, that's all that matters. Even if it's just uh, what, what, what that that politician lady say, you know, one sixteenth. You know, she's even if you're one sixteenth Saab one, you're Saab one. That's my opinion, and it should be the way it is. You know, I, it was really heart disheartening to see when, um, you know, uh, my, my older brother, right. Uh, Ma'a Seuli, uh, you guys know him by, uh, Dwayne, the rock Johnson. So, when he, uh, he's out there out in, in the public eye, just, just a hey, rock Remember when we were growing up, uh, when he's out there representing the culture to the fullest. And I remember when he came out with, uh, the, the movie Hobbs and Shaw, he had a little line that he spoke in Psalm one. And the community blasted him on on, uh, on Instagram and Twitter, you know, like, oh, why do you sound like that? Like you're a mix up. Like the guy is out there putting his neck out for us, for us as a community, and you're over there making fun of him because he didn't say the words right. And, it, and I, I was like, I was watching all this other stuff. I'm like, man, how disrespectful can you be? Like you that you sit in in your bus stop with your your, your with no shoes on and an ear. With a, with a phone that you borrowed so you can talk crap online about a guy who's worth millions of dollars and still stuck his neck out for the community. And you're over here making fun of him, you know? Like that, if you, if you, if it's in your blood, if you were born into it, if you were raised in the culture or not, if you represent that side, you're Psalm one, you're always gonna be good enough. And then to me, that's, that's all that matters. You know, as long as you, care to represent it show it with respect don't be disrespectful that's it you are sovereign enough yeah and, and uh who are we to tell people that they are not something that they want to be right right and, well, uh, right. And, yeah. well <laughs> there's a little bit of issues there but but um i think uh the cultural identity back to it again um, it's very important because we gain more confidence in our in our identity as Samoans when we uh, speak the the language, right? And I understand uh, the how the people who were born Samoan and can't speak the language. I understand. I kind of understand their perspective because uh, speaking the la language, you develop more pride in the Samoan culture, right? And there's this saying, the less Samoan you speak, the more your pride in Samoan language uh, diminishes. Uh, but, and, and that's true in uh, some circumstances, right? Um, I think pride and interest in the Samoan culture, uh, that's important. But we're all uh, in this world together and Samoan culture is about what the word faluado, respect and family. So we should try to practice that more on um, those who are Afakasi or can't speak the language or whatever the situation is. I can relate to uh, Johnny because my wife was born in American Samoa, but she was adopted at a very young age and raised in Tropic Utah. So she was hardly, rarely around uh, other Samoans like us who were born and raised on the island. 
Um, it's very important for people to realize that it takes a village uh, to raise someone, and that applies to uh, our Samoan culture. When you're not around other Samoans, how are you going to learn the language, right? It, even for me, I'm uh, having to teach my uh, kids Chinese. They struggle because they're not around a whole group of people to even learn the language. They can't practice it. They can't speak it because I can't understand Chinese, right? Um, and there are two reasons why parents, I understand it from a parent's point of view, why parents don't teach their uh, children the Samoan language and tradition is because here in America or wherever in New Zealand or Australia or what other countries, we don't have time to teach our kids because we're working um, these jobs that keep uh, keeps us occupied. We have activities in the afternoons, whether for church or sports. Um, we don't have time and either we don't have time or we're distance, distancing ourselves from the Samoan way of life. So those are the main two reasons why uh, Samoan parents don't teach their kids uh, the language and traditions. When I was in American Samoa, I learned the language when I was attending, when I went to a Methodist uh, church, Samoan Methodist church, and I went to the Awa Samoa. So we had exams, they grilled us on uh, Samoan language, and that's how I learned uh, the Samoan language quickly. It was through the church, through the school, and basically the, when I went and Ka'a, or when I went and Niva in the village, that's you how pick up I, slang. Yeah, you pick up slang, you learn the language. But here in America, there's none of that. So the kids are left with no other options but to learn only the English language, right? Because it, it uh, benefits them to speak English here versus learning another language. And uh, to speak uh, for myself, growing up, I only knew that I was Samoan. <laughs> I didn't, you know, not knowing the language. I was just, you know, my parents tell me you're you're Samoan boy, so you know, that's how I identify myself. You know, until of course we met with other families, or we would go to New Zealand, and you know, they primarily, uh, you know, they freshly migrated over from Samoa, so everybody's still speaking the language. You know, I'm feeling foreign in that sense. And, in other environments where everybody's primarily speaking the language. Uh, but I never, not really once ever felt like I wasn't. But I, I could feel the judgment like, like Johnny's wife or maybe even your wife at times. Does Miranda speak the language? Does your wife speak the language? Papa? She does? Okay. Yeah, so she's born and raised too. <laughs> uh, yeah. But like, uh, Shout out to Arona Tell, Staff Sergeant Tell, back in our Okinawa days. He would take us all in. But, you know, one of the first questions he asked is, do you speak the lingo? And I'm like, nah. And then he was like, oh, that's all right. And he still took care of me, looked out for me. But I remember meeting some person over at Tell's house who, you know, he didn't, once he found out I didn't speak the language, like I could see the look and the judgment and then him, I can hear him mumbling under his breath. <laughs> I'm not going to say his name, but we all know him. <laughs> but there's that. And then uh, just another quick funny story that uh, one of the reasons why I wish I spoke the language is because over there in Okinawa, I'm fresh, fresh, you know, young boo. And one of the Kwasa Faita, he was a grunt with 2-7 on the mu. He was hanging out at the barracks with me and we're out in the parking lot and duty with some punk old corporal trying to punk us and tell him it was time to go and I'm like you know me being new I'm like trying to abide by the rules I'm like okay but no uh, Pawasa on the other hand you know he's a grunt he's not gonna listen to any pole trying to kick him out <laughs> so he's like looking at him mad dogging him and then he's trying to act like we're speaking the language though he's like Uso I'm like, what? <laughs> he's like, fuck a lick 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 a lick
so old school. <laughs> like, I was like, yeah, man, just go. <laughs> that was one of the instances I wish I, I spoke the language, but uh, I mean. Oh, yeah, it's always convenient to have that little thing to talk crap about people in public. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, well, that was one of the worst imitations ever. <laughs> like, uh, but, uh, one more question that I want to I want to kind of tie in with the subject is that we're all fathers here and uh, are you going to teach your kids the language? I know, Tan, you already spoke on, you know, time consuming and also just where we live, it's more beneficial to speak English. And I'll say that on my behalf, I'm able to read, you know, in between the lines when it comes to dirt bags and and sneaky people and shady people uh, more often than you know, others who speak two languages. Well, I guess I speak two languages, English and dirtbag, but <laughs> as fathers who speak the language, are you guys going to teach your children? Are you going to make them speak it? You know, why or why not? You know, just leave that. I'm going to chime in on this one. Um, I like this one. Uh, so with my... At first, I used to make the excuses of uh, I was busy, busy, and I and it, initially it worked. My, my kids were little. I worked a lot, a lot, fourteen hour days constantly. I was home to sleep and eat, and then go back to work. Um, we were, you know, I was trying to provide for. We had our kids back to back, so we had a bunch of little babies at home all at once, and so yeah that was the excuse. I didn't have time. I was, I spoke, I was the only one that spoke the language. My wife understood, but she wasn't very good at it. Um, my mother-in-law was nearby and she also spoke the language, but you know, she was busy working herself. And so that's how it went. And that was the excuse I used for years. And then I tried getting into it when I had free time, I'd come home and I'd give little lessons, teach them. My kids always knew like, they knew how to count from one to 10. Uh, they knew the alphabet. They knew some of the main words that we used around the house the most, uh, like sauka ele, awa, sasa, stuff like that. And um, so eventually um, we get up, you know, fast forward all these years, we're, we're up here now in, in Utah and, and I'm still trying to give a conscious effort, but I always believe like it, unless I, um, both parties in the house, as in me and my wife spoke someone and spoke it regularly around the children and exposed them to that environment, then they would, uh, inevitably pick it up and speak Samoan themselves, which was how I was. I learned how to speak Samoan because my, both my parents spoke Samoan in the house. They also spoke English, but it was mostly Samoan in the house. And so, but then my cousin recently, uh, her and her husband had a son. Um, and they been showing him they, uh, the his mother in law my, my 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 cousin's mother in law is nearby and she, when she watches the sun she plays these YouTube videos with uh, how to learn Samoa and there's a lot of you there's a lot of videos out there and it's little stuff like you know they they have like the song and background and they're like let me just teach you how to speak Samoa for and they're geared towards children toddler age and below and they do like you know stuff like ah ah atso and he goes, and they're teaching him. My nephew speaks Psalm one, or he understands Psalm one now. And homeboy is a year and some change years old. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, if you're willing to put in the effort at the beginning, um, it's possible. And all it is is just timing. You know, sometimes uh, if it's not regularly spoken in the house, your children will pick up the way they see you act. You know, I'm already starting to notice that my oldest daughter acts the most like me, um, where her mannerisms, the way she talks, the way she analyzes things in general, she questions everything. And it's annoying, but then I do it too. You know, because I, I run in the, 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 the midway path of trying to tell her to, Hey, do what I tell you. She's like, but dad, you know, what about it? And I was like, no, 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 no. But at the same time, I do the same thing. So I'm like, ah, I hate myself. And so, but I think it, it really comes down to a conscious effort. You have to really try to try to teach them. And it's possible Then there's, and there's a lot of better, there's a lot of uh, um, more, you know, stuff 
material that could be used to, to aid in the, the teaching of children, not just you. Hey, if I tell you that this is the, this is how you say this, you know, always stuff like that. Um, but it's out there, you know. So YouTube's a really, really good uh, if used properly. YouTube's really good for for uh, helping you teach your kids. They have a lot of episodes out there. Yeah, um, I use uh, me and my wife uses uh, YouTube a lot to teach our kids Chinese. And for me, um, as a parent, I do think of the future and what is more beneficial for my kids. So choosing between learning another language, we've decided to have our kids learn Chinese because it's more beneficial and there's more uh, potential for them down on the line of employment and you know, communication because as of now, Samoan is not a language that you can use in like IT or any jobs that's high paying, right? So we enrolled our kids in dual language schools. We uh, encouraged them to speak Chinese, have them call their grandfather to speak uh, Chinese. And we decided that Chinese, Chinese Mandarin will be the main language, second language, and Samoan will be learned whenever they uh, pick it up. Because my wife, she didn't learn, she didn't know a lot of Samoan until um, she married me. That's when she started learning a lot of words in Samoan. She she knows a simple Samoan language, but ever since Mary. Uh, she doesn't know the heavy words, right? So, yeah, to me as a parent, uh, I I put my kids' future first before thinking of uh, teaching them Samoan language. And I kind of push that responsibility to, you know, my nieces, my nephews, because um, I do have nephews in uh, American Samoa, and they're, they learn the language. And... You know, whatever is beneficial for, uh, I think parents should do whatever is beneficial for their kids, for their future. And that's the way uh, that I think. Very good point. Hey, especially with the employment aspect, uh, you know, China's pretty much everywhere and learning Mandarin. Man, it's going to be a huge help in the future. What about you, Fatu, son of a preacher man? Am I going to teach my kids someone? Yes. I'm going to teach them someone. <laughs> I have, first of all, I didn't even know that there was a YouTube thing for, to teach kids how to speak Samoan. This whole time, me and my wife has just been throwing my daughter and my son words so that way they can't catch it. Like, you know, um, like the song, you know, Head, Shoulders, Knees, and Toes. Uh, my daughter got that down, so she knows all the Samoan version of that song. My son, he learned, he knows the moves, but doesn't know the words. But yeah, uh, I think I'm gonna teach my kids someone, but uh, not just someone. After watching the movie, uh, was it uh, Moana? Was it no, no, no? Was that late? Was it the Boondock Saints? Oh yeah. After watching that movie, man, and how they were like how the two brothers were speaking all types of languages. Like after they watch that movie, like I want, I want that for my kids. Like I want them, not just someone. I want them to learn a lot more languages than me. Me, I only know three languages: a little bit of Tongan, Samoan, English, and a little bit of Japanese from being stationed there. But oh, I want my kids to learn a lot more languages than me, especially Japanese, because you know, you know that <clears throat> anime in Japanese is a lot better than in English. I watch the subtitles, huh? Yep. <laughs> All righty. Uh, as for myself, of course, I can't teach my kids. <laughs> and my, my wife, you know, she's in the whitest tan shirt, but uh, you know, she's she's got the Samoan blood running through her veins as well. Uh, one thing I can hope for though is maybe at least you know, dropping my kids off at. And my parents, uh, if they spend time with them, maybe, you know, teach them a little here and there. Because even though I don't understand the language, 
I feel a certain spirit when the language is spoken, you know, especially at funerals or areas of, of reverence and respect. You know, I feel it in my spirit and I, I'm very appreciative of that. Like I may not understand one word of what is going on, but I, man, I feel that, you know, that feeling of my soul, man, and it's, it's so powerful and I love it, even though I don't know what the heck is going on. But, uh, other than that, anything else anybody have left to say, tie into this subject? Yeah, if you, if you, if you as a parent want your kids to learn another language, you better teach them while they're young. And there are resources out there for your child to learn whatever language you want them to learn. Uh, there are schools that do dual language. Like in Utah, there are uh, schools that have dual languages in French, Chinese. I believe somewhere in Salt Lake or West Valley, they, they might have a Samoan immersion. I'm not sure. But there are different languages out there that you can have your kids enrolled in and use resources like YouTube, uh, play music with languages. And there are some expensive apps like, I forgot the name, Babel. something lingo. Rosetta Stone, ba yeah. Babel. Those are some Babel. apps. Yep. Sorry, Babel. But it's all, remember, if your kids are putting time to learn this language, they can't learn a language if you're not also helping them. And I really need to uh, act that part. So, yeah, uh, so I, I'm always a big thing because I mean, I see it this way. Um, one of my good friends from high school, we played football together and stuff like that. He served his mission in American Samoa. He actually, matter of fact, he was for a while, he was in my mom's ward in Owa. Um, and when he came back, homeboy spoke straight up Samoan. When I knew him in high school, he didn't speak. He was, he was like six foot four, tall, redheaded, white dude. And uh, yeah, now he speaks Samoan. Yeah, it's broken. It, it's it's got a heavy American accent in it, but he speaks the language. And so, I mean, I always see it as like if if he could do it, I mean, a lot of people can do it. You just have to have the need, the drive, and then you know, just an avenue to use it. Um, when uh, I still never forgot this instance. Uh, we were doing Turkey Bowl a while back, it was years ago, and I ran into some old Palangi guy, really old man here in Clearfield that spoke Samoa and he served his mission in Western Samoa for the Mormon church. And he just never forgot the language to an extent. Yeah. He forgot a lot of the stuff, but he remembered a lot of the phrases and he, you know, he greeted himself and said, Hey, and I was responding to him back and forth. And we had a nice little conversation in Samoa and I was just surprised. So, I mean, it's possible. You can learn, you can learn the language. Uh, I know the, the, the video was geared towards uh, um, about being Samoan enough, but I believe that, we've established the fact that you don't need to speak Samoan to, to prove that you're Samoan. You, you are what you are, uh, whether people around you accept you or not, you know, uh, even if the, the term quote unquote, technical, technically I'm Samoan. No, you're Samoan, you know, there it's, it's as long as you show reverence and respect to the culture. Um, cause I know cultural appropriation is a hot topic right now in, in the U S it's a hot ticket item, but, don't ever let anybody else feel that you're lesser than what you believe in yourself to be. And it's a good message to teach your kids, you know? Yeah. And it's all be about firm. your pursuit of happiness and whatever makes you happy. You do you. Well, for those of you listeners who uh, can relate, uh, we hope this reaching some way and help you understand it. Uh, you are you. Papa, you got anything to leave the people with? Oh, yes. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, <laughs> now, you know, it's Those your remarks. Fatsu? Yeah. It's 2022. You can be whatever you want. You can be a refrigerator. Oh, I, oh, I don't, yeah. I don't. <laughs> you can be someone if you want. Man. Say something. I uplift. Uplift. Oh. <laughs> I uplift you in the name of the Son, the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right, thank you, everyone. Like, comment, subscribe, and join us next time.